you'd like to make some killer compost, I'm going to show you a way to do it that takes all the guesswork out of how much materials to put in, what type of material to put in. It's very easy and it involves using a compost calculator. Just because there's a calculator in the name doesn't mean there's a bunch of math. It's really easy. Just follow along. I guarantee you're going to love it. This particular calculator is made by Green Mountain Technologies. It's free. Let me show you what to do. Here's three grape tomato plants I grew in my garden this year. They got to be about 12 to 14 feet tall with hundreds and hundreds of tomatoes on them. And this was due in part by all the organic soil amendments I put in the garden as well as the compost I made using a compost calculator. I was getting harvests like this throughout the growing season and making good compost was definitely one of the secrets to my success. So this is the compost calculator I was talking about and don't let calculator discourage you from using it. It's actually very easy to use and it works great. It works great for all kinds of composting. This one is offered by Green Mountain Technologies. It's free. It doesn't require a login. It's online. I use it all the time. The website address that it's at is compostingtechnology.com. So if you go to that main web page, then go to resources and go to compost calculator. This is the, uh, the page you'll come up to. So compostingtechnology.com, go to resources, compost calculator. And I'm going to jump right into using this. Um, the first thing that you need to do is configure it for the uh, units you want to use. If you notice, you can do, uh, do it by weight, kilograms, pounds, tons, and metric tons. You can do it by volume, liters, cubic yards, cubic feet, cubic meters, gallons. Um, I use this for making compost, hot compost in a compost tumbler and you might want to check out that video on my YouTube channel. It's a really great method I developed and it works, um, it works great. Um, so I use gallons because I use small quantities and you know if you notice you can use cubic meters or if you go by weight you can use tons there's no way I need that much compost. I make this for myself in my home garden so um, I use I use gallons and that's what I'm just gonna um, uh, use here. Then uh, for carbon method I just use available that's fine. So those are set now I can um, I can add the materials I want to use. Let me get this uh, set up here. So this is great because you can just add different materials. When it says add feedstock, it displays a list of different materials that you might use in your compost. And depending on what you have and what you have available, you can pick and choose and figure out a good um, recipe. So here I'm going to pick straw. That's very common in compost, especially in home gardening like my own and I just click the box add this to the recipe and remember I'm using gallons let's say I have four gallons of this available press enter and then it's going to display the density moisture and carbon to nitrogen ratio I know straw has a lot of carbon so you can see carbon is very high on this recipe so far. In this green portion, I, um, I use about a 20 to 30 carbon to nitrogen ratio. And this is the beauty of this. As I add materials, this display is going to change and help me decide and fine tune and dial in how much of each material to use. So let's, uh, let's add something else. Let's say, well, I have a lot of 
uh, veggie scraps to use. So there's some vegetable waste. Maybe I just cleaned out my garden and I've got all kinds of stuff I can use. Great. There we go. So I added that to this recipe. And let's say I have five gallons. I'll press enter. And if we go to this display, it has calculated the carbon to nitrogen ratio in these two materials and it's coming up with about 20. That's great. I'm on my way to getting a good mix. So let's say what else do I have? Let's say I've um, got some oh anything here. Fruit waste. I use that a lot. I'm going to add that. Now let's say I've got two gallons. There we go. It's already done the work for me. Looks like the carbon to nitrogen ratio has increased. Notice um, the moisture in this mix is pretty high. So let me think here. It's high but I've good, got good um, carbon to nitrogen ratio. The carbon could go up. I'm going to try adding something a little dry to dry out this uh, this mix. Now I know a lot of people have leaves available. So let's hear, see here. Leaves loose and dry. That sounds good to me. I'm going to add that. Let's say I have four gallons. Okay, if we look at these, um, this display, carbon to nitrogen still looks good. Looks like it's gotten a little drier. Density's pretty good. Let's say, uh, yeah, this seems too wet. Let's change some quantities. Vegetable waste, that might be kind of a wet mess. Let's put three in there gotten drier. Carbon to nitrogen ratio went up. It's gotten a little less dense. That seems good. This is actually not a bad mix. I can deal with the moisture. Um, over time some of the bacteria in the pile is going to use up some of that moisture. I'm going to turn it a little bit. I'll probably uh, in my particular case I have it in a tumbler and I can uh, let some of the uh, if there's any uh, excess liquid drain out, this is pretty good. Um, now let's say um, I don't have, oh, I thought I had some fruit waste. I don't. Let's just take this one out. Okay, or it recalculated it. So this got a little drier. Density's good. Carbon to nitrogen ratio is good. This is pretty good mix. So you can see how all I have to do is add my ingredients and depending on my particular situation I might have different materials available at different times and all I have to do is add and subtract what I have. I don't have to worry about I have to have straw, I have to have vegetable waste, I have to have leaves. Let's say I don't have leaves. Let's take that out. Well, let's see, you know what? I have been saving newspapers. Let's see, newsprint. There we go. Maybe I could use newsprint. Got that. Let's try four gallons of that. And let's see what happened here. Carbon to nitrogen's pretty good. Moisture's not bad. Density means kind of how fluffy it is, how light, is it really heavy. That seems really good. That's a pretty good um, pretty good mix. Uh, let's say I'm making a big pile in a 3x3 three three bin that I made out of uh, <clears throat> pallets. And I don't know, I've got some I've got some manure here from a dairy cow. 
All right, how much do I have? I don't know. I've got uh, five gallons. All right, let's see what it did here. Density's gone up. Moisture's pretty high. Carbon to nitrogen ratios still in that green zone. That seems pretty good. Um, and maybe, okay, since I'm putting manure in here, I want to put some leaves. I was driving by and one of my neighbors had bagged up some leaves and put them by the curb. And I'm going to use my some more leaves now. Alright. We got some leaves and I got, uh, I've got 10 gallons. All right, now, this is looking pretty good. I've got a good carbon to nitrogen ratio. Moisture's getting a little lower. Still not really that dense and compacted and heavy. It's gonna allow oxygen to get in there. It's a pretty good mix. So in case you're looking at this on a device with a small screen, let me zoom in and show you what we've got. In this mix, we've got straw, vegetable waste, newsprint, and manure, and leaves. And the density is in this green zone, which is pretty good. Moisture is a little high, but not bad carbon to nitrogen ratios in the green zone it's pretty good this is probably the most important thing about um, compost is getting the carbon to nitrogen ratio uh, correct that will allow the optimum development and growth of bacteria that will break down the material faster alright let me give you another scenario Let's say we have a lot of fruit waste and let's say we have 30 gallons of this. Carbon to nitrogen ratio is pretty high. It's very wet. Is very dense. So in this case we know well, that's too much and maybe you say to yourself well I want to go ahead and use it all. Well we need to add something here to dry this out. Let's um, see if we can add some more leaves. Add 30 gallons of leaves. Got a little drier a lot of carbon in there still. How about vegetable waste? Can we change that quantity? Let's change that to 15. That helped the carbon to nitrogen ratio. Still pretty dense. Let's see here. It's very dense. Very moist we need to add let's see if we do 30 gallons of vegetable waste that didn't work let's change that back to 15 how about we add some straw 15 gallons of straw helped with the density carbon to nitrogen let's see here how about adding some grass cuttings, some loose grass cuttings. And let's do 10 gallons of that. That's getting better. The moisture's coming down. Density is getting better. 
carbon to nit nitrogen ratios getting better so you can see by playing around with the ingredients you can get a better mix and like I said getting the carbon to nitrogen ratio in this green zone is just optimal with moisture you can deal with that by letting the pile sit making sure you mix it as long as it's not too dense it won't get compacted and turn aerobic or sorry anaerobic um, it's just uh, this this calculator method really helps you focus on getting a good compost mix now once you've got your recipe down to the materials that you want to use and the quantities you want to use all you have to do is jot them down go out in your garden and make your compost it's that simple so this is pretty easy to use you don't have to use a compost calculator when you make compost but when I've read on forums and different websites of about people wanting to know how to make compost I went through the same thing when I started what are you talking about when you're talking about a brown material what do you mean nitrogen uh, I didn't understand it at all and through a process of learning and using something like this um, I started to dial in the ingredients in the compost I was making and now I can make it like a pro and since I was able to learn this I wanted to show you this uh, keep in mind that you can use this no matter what kind of units you're using um, no what no matter what kind of compost you're making it can be in a bin it can be the Berkeley me method it can be sheet composting it can be in a compost tumbler it can be a hot method cold method this will help you determine how much material uh, to use in each recipe and that um, and if you do that you can make better compost I hope this helps you thanks for watching please remember to like and subscribe have a great day